G'day everyone. So this is just a bit of a bench update because I'm waiting on things to dry and I've got a few things going at once and I don't want to start anything new and I can't work anymore on the things I'm doing so I'm just going to do a bit of a bench update. So pick this up. You can see I finished the aircraft. The final part's not out yet because I'm still working on the base. It's uh, quite a bit to go yet. And that will all be explaining my final part, which, which will be the final part when this one comes up for the duck. Uh, love the aircraft, but hate the rigging. Anyway, so that's probably another week or so off yet before we see that completed um, so once that's done well that will be just about it for my uh, entries for the QM HE for 2024 although I am <laughs> couldn't help myself I got this recently it's your chibi or egg or toon stall kit the uh, Chinese aircraft carrier, um, sort of doing a bit of groundwork with it, putting parts together. It's pretty, these styles of kits are usually pretty chunky. I think they're aimed more for children to get them into the hobby. Well, they should be anyway, but uh, it's rather clunky how it goes together. So that's the hull, so it's one, two, three, four bits, and it's really push fit. I, I glue them and I treat them like a normal model, so fill the gaps, uh, the seams and that, and sand it up and clean it up, but it's a pretty decent size, and they're not that expensive really, but, but with this kit, uh, my concern is the... The aircraft that come with it, they're like two halves, and they're really uh, chunky how they go together, so there's quite a bit of a clean up going to be needed on them. So I'm, I'm not committing myself to make that happen for the show, but it's a bit of a bit of a uh, fun project. Uh, as mentioned in my last update, I think I'm still going to finish this off, the rescribing project, um, once I get the duck out of the way, I'll be back onto this and another project I'm doing special for someone, which is, uh, <laughs> the brand of kit is, well, I've never done it before and it is, uh, I'm going to say it's the worst kit I've ever built. Anyway, once... I get a couple of things out the way, as mentioned, I'm still going to do these, and I'll, I'll start one of them, so I'm going to throw it out to you viewers, which one do you want to see done, the 172nd Mirage 3.0 Australian Air Force, or 148 Dorings Bolty Vengeance Mark II, also Australian Air Force. I'll be doing, eventually I'm doing both of them, but I'll start one, and the other one will be waiting a while. So if I get some votes, this is my walk away. Uh, I want considerable votes, one or two doesn't count. If I don't get, let's say more than 10, then I'll just build what I want. Uh, what have I got in recently? Probably not of interest to many. This one might be. I got this in. Uh, I really love Cold War aircraft. I love the F 84G. I like the uh, Thunder Streak as well, but I like this one with the. Uh, 
squared off wings, the F had the swept wings, but obviously Tamiya, and it's, uh, when I open it up, I'm going to go out on the limb, this might have been one of the original boxings of it, because all the decals have yellowed, so I need to uh, try the old put them in the window in the sun for a couple of days, see if I can get the yellowing out. Uh, if I can't do that, I, was, I considered anyway doing an aftermarket scheme like uh, a Greek one or something like that, but let's see what happens if, if I can improve those decals. This is bit of a story to this one. I bought this probably three months ago and it had a short shot which I've never seen. The only short shots I've ever seen is from Airfix. This one had to Yawa. It had one of the fuselage halves was missing about probably two centimeters. There was a big gap in it. So uh, that's it was in a spot really I couldn't fix it myself so I had to go through the process of getting a replacement so uh, I looked up Hattie Gower they're still living in the 1960s you have to write them a letter not an email a letter that is ridiculous so I contacted the vendor who I bought it from and unfortunately for them they had to go through the process of getting a replacement from their supplier which seemed to drag on for ages but I can't blame the vendor because they don't know what they're getting either when they get in kits but anyway it's been replaced so yeah well, I'm not doing reviews on them but again if either of them you want to see a review if I can get more than 10 call outs for it I'll do them otherwise I'm not worried about them uh, what else have I got in the last couple of months I've got these, again these are the uh, chibi, I think the Japanese call them. I've got an idea for these uh, and it's come to mind after watching the Godzilla Minus One movie. So these are your cartoon style uh, egg style chips. So they're pretty small, but i got a idea of a 3D printed chibi Godzilla to match the cartoon style of the chips and do a bit of a little die over it, we'll see what happens. And I got these in last week, these are brand new from Tiger Model. So we got the uh, Mustang, don't get too much glare there, Mustang. And unfortunately, they put a friggin' huge sticker on top of that that wrecked the box up. But the uh, uh, Fock Wolf F190. Again, I'm not doing reviews on these, so I'm just showing them now. But again, if I can get a heap of. Not much time anyway, but. I find these uh, quite fun. That style of kit, the tune. tune style kits, something different, but uh, if I can get, if anyone wants to see a review of them, then again, if I can get over 10 call outs for it, then I'll do them, uh, coming in the mail soon, so Kitty Hawk, as you all know, went out of business, but someone bought their moulds, I think the company is Zimi, Z-I-M-I, -I, something like that, and uh, a couple of weeks ago, I noticed Lucky Model, who's one of the uh, overseas dealers, shops, or get gear from, they have uh, limited, limited amounts of a whole heap of Kitty Hawk kits. And I know all the whiners you say, oh, you can't build Kitty Hawk. Well, they do some great subject matter, and yes, they can be built if you have a go. And I had some years ago, 
in my stash I've got kits that I'll buy and then down the track I'll get rid of them and then uh, I should have kept that and Kitty Hawk was one of those brands I should have kept but I've got the uh, F101 for AC the single seat Voodoo coming in uh, the reason I bought the single seat is because you can get a lot of aftermarket for that one the double seater didn't seem to be much available and I'm getting the uh, UH1D Iroquois uh, definitely wished I'd bought it when they were out originally and I never got around to it and then you couldn't find them anymore unless it was for a ridiculous price well now I got it for a decent price and again that's got uh, any aftermarket available is pretty much for that kit uh, I did a review for the Italeri Iroquois a while back because I thought well this is the only one I'm ever going to get but thankfully I've got the Kitty Hawk one now so I'll probably sell the Italeri one and the other one was the uh, F9F uh, Cougar which was one I did have in my stash I think I had a Voodoo too and I flogged them off and always regretting I did that so now I've got it back so I got them which is good news for me I will do reviews on them when they come in uh, like I mentioned there was a lot of whiners about Kitty Hawk some of their kits are modular because they do single seat two seats etc uh, and like many I guess uh, Chinese companies some of their instructions are a bit hard to interpret some things get lost in translation and some of their diagrams that are a bit difficult to work out but they build up to great kits and they do great subject matter that no one else is doing so that's what you want to build that's what you got to deal with all right uh so that's about it what i'm gonna do now is i'll pause this and i'm gonna because i'm bored and i'm not building anything i'm gonna go around and i'm gonna show my stash which is uh <laughs> getting out of hand again but as i mentioned I, I buy kits and then down the track like this is not just me this is every model probably they think ah oh, i can build it i'll get rid of it so I'm going to show you my stash uh, there'll be lots of pauses through it because at the moment my room is a bloody mess and you don't need to see all the mess <laughs> you just want to see the kits uh, and this is straight up I'm not bragging I'm, and to be honest to compared to some people I probably don't have or well, I think I have a huge stash but compared to some it's not as big because I know of guys who got like 2,000 plus kits so I haven't got that many that's for sure and I'm not bragging I'm just showing you what I have uh, so uh, I'm gonna pause now and we shall continue with what I got all right here we go in no particular order so we got a few helicopters there but the rest of here is uh, ships, submarines, and those chibi ships I just showed before. Uh, we go down into some sci fi, a bit of Star Trek, the ADAT, which is definitely going to be built for next year's QMHE in a diorama. Uh, the mailing box has got spare parts from tanks. Uh, some pick, uh, kits I get, like this one, they're hard to come by. And it's also something I want to build. And obviously, like everyone who has a stash, you're never going to build all of it. you got to pick what you want to build. Some of these kits will get sold on here and there. Others I want to build, but we'll see what happens. All right, now, come over here. So I've got 
the tornado there I've got a heap of aftermarket for that so that's something that will be upcoming and we let out the way uh, within either the end of this year or start of next year I want to do the tornado and I'll be doing that in the grey <coughs> excuse me grey green wraparound camo I think, I don't, even though that's got nice uh, tail art I'm not a fan of low vis aircraft pea shooter another one that's hard to come by it's a pretty old kit though and there's not really I don't think there's much in the aftermarket for it there's a bit of all sorts here you can see my room is a mess crap liner really which is why I'm going to be pausing in between stashes here Alright, a lot of, that's uh, just about all 172nd in here. Some of it's upside down or round about. Actually, the airfix ones aren't upside down. They print their art upside down on the side of the box. And there's even a car. The old Ravel. HE162 There's a kitty hook kit that I never got rid of, thankfully Not The 132nd HK models uh, B25 and Down here, it's some uh, armour So you can see in the background my <laughs> Q-Rack. This is my games room that when I got back into modelling became my hobby room. So obviously I don't play pool anymore. The Thunder Chief, <coughs> my favourite. Vietnam era aircraft that will be getting the full aftermarket treatment when I do that one. Right, back here again, the bottom. Super sized thud that will also get the full aftermarket. I need to come back and change the light for the top there. The Skyhawk, when I get around to that one, would be Australian Navy. Oh, try again. Uh, F-16XL, that's my second one, I built one years ago, I love that aircraft, and 
had big plans for that, but in the current climate, I'm not going to do what I was going to do with it because I'll probably get abused. All right, last little section. Sorry for the differences of light, but it is what it is. All right, well, that's my insanely messy stash. Like I said, I'm not bragging, I'm just showing what I got. Uh, a lot of modelers like to see other modelers collections um, and that is mine oh that's another one I want to do hopefully next year I've got a whole heap of aftermarket for that the piba that's sort of a I built one of them when I was really young so Bit of a nostalgic build for me, that one would be, even though back then I don't model like I do now. Uh, yeah, so there you go. I hope you enjoyed having a look at my messy room stash. Thanks for watching.